Mayor, both Brett and Phil were present at the Business Park North meeting. So I'm a little surprised they haven't connected in on this one yet. I see Brett. Okay. I don't see Phil. He said he's I, I'm I'm here just on audio. My computer is not liking go to meeting right now. Oh. Well you can walk so over you guys can hear me. So you're so caller seven. Figure it out. All right, and then uh, who would call her 8B? Can I call her 8? Okay. It's, uh, are you logged in and called in? Nope. Okay. All right, before we get started, if everybody could just mute their line and then uh, that'll make things a little bit less congested in the virtual world. We always have fun at these meetings. So uh, looks like most everybody's muted, but me, uh, I appreciate that. And then uh, I think we're about ready to start. So welcome, it's uh, Monday, September 14th, 2020. This is the plan commission meeting. Uh, we do have a quorum, we have a large agenda tonight. We'll try to get through it as efficiently as we can for those that wanna speak. We have several public hearings. Um, we'll just go in the order unless uh, Rodney tells me otherwise. Rodney is gonna operate the screen, which will make things easier. So the first item um, up for approval would be the minutes from the meetings of August 10th and August 25th. I would entertain a motion for both of those. Do we have a motion for the minutes? I'll make them a motion. All right, and a second. Anybody like to make a second on the minutes? Everybody's muted. I'll second. All right, second by Alderperson person Caravello. Would anybody like anything uh, removed or acted separately in the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? All right, the minutes are approved. Item number three is the council representative report. All the person Caravello, did you have anything to share tonight? Uh, just two very brief things that at the September 8th council meeting, uh, ordinance 17 of 2020 passed was a zoning code amendment and ordinance 18 of 2020 had a first reading, which we are continuing to discuss this evening. All right, very good. Any questions about that? Hearing none, we'll move on to the staff report. Uh, Director Shield. The staff review letter is in your packet. Um, gives you just a brief overview of some of the projects. Um, available to answer questions if there are any. Any questions on anything? Nope, it's just good to see all the, the progress that's going on with all the buildings. Yeah, it's been busy. So For sure. We like being busy. All right, next item is a request by Habitat for Humanity to resurvey the properties at 1114, 1115, 1122, and 1123 Able Court. Looks like uh, Director Shield has a map up right now. You want to just walk us through that? And is there somebody on here from Habitat? Yeah. Looks like Steve's on there. He's here as well. 
I'll give you a quick overview. This map that's on your screen actually shows the platted area known as Able Court or the Able Plat. Lots uh, four, five, and eight, nine are the CSM areas for tonight's consideration. Lots number four and number nine are the second, the next agenda item where they're attempting to rezone those single family properties to twin home to allow for uh, duplexes or two family uh, residences to be constructed on all four of the lots, four, five, and eight, and nine. The CSM would uh, essentially create the zero lot lines to accommodate that. You'll notice the, the minor uh, lot line adjustments, if you will, shown on this initial survey for the north side lots. You can see the, the minor lot line adjustment to, between the proposed lot two and lot three that's necessary to accommodate the, the required uh, size of each parcel and the frontage of each parcel. So that would accomplish that if this CSM is approved. As part of the same resolution, there's a secondary CSM that does the same for the lots on the south side of Able Court. Uh, the, the lot lines adjustment really is between lots two and three as well on this particular parcel uh, or as part of this CSM. So you'll recognize uh, that those lot line adjustments leave the easements that remain in place as part of the CSM. Ultimately, um, the developer will actually be installing Able Court or the, uh, the people that are developing these lots along with the remaining lots to the farther to the west on the end of the cul-de-sac um, would have public improvements, street, curb, gutter, sidewalk, and sewer and water extended into the cul-de-sac to allow for these four parcels to be constructed. Actually, all, all six parcels, but this application is really for lots four and five and eight and nine. Um, the motion or the, the part of this agenda item is really for the certified survey map for the two lots on the north side to be split into four. Um, zero lot line lots, if you will. And on the south side is the secondary the CSM doing the same. What would be the intended use of the uh, of the lot six and seven, the remaining uh, two lots on the end of that court? Hey, Roddy, this is Gary. I can address that a little bit. Those are sticking with the original developer, and those are zoned MR10 right now. Those are not planned to be built on at this time. Okay. I'm just trying to get a feel for what the uh, what the traffic volume may be in and out of that that court. Sure. The two parcels that you just referenced on the far west end of this cul-de-sac abut Cascade Falls uh, to the to the west is Cascade Falls that is on the south side of Jackson Street, just to the west of Lincoln Avenue. This is Steve Hanrahan with Habitat. I want to thank you for uh, taking a look at this for us, but I just wanted to make sure it's understood that we do not own those two large lots. Uh, we're only, uh, we've purchased the lots that we're talking about building the twin homes of. Okay. <clears throat> and again, I, I'm mostly just trying to gauge it for, for what we would have for um, what sort of traffic volume. I mean, I know that this is kind of a, uh, um, it's an ending of a road, so it's not meant for through traffic, but it, so it would only accommodate the traffic that would be dwelling within that. So, um, but I was just wondering if they were con considering to put like some, maybe some larger multi-units in there, if those would accommodate four plexes or, or larger. I think based on the size of the lots, they may be in that uh, six, six to eight unit range. Okay. That, but that doesn't, uh, you really have to evaluate the site for parking and on-site requirements. So they may or may yeah. not be able to accomplish that on those remaining parcels. Okay. 
Do we know about the uh, at the outlet of Abel Court there on to back onto Lincoln Avenue? Um, what the visibility triangle is on on that end? Because that gets, I mean, that that's a fairly busy street and intersection there, especially well when when school is running normal. Um, that's a, a fairly busy intersection. Yeah, I don't think we should have visibility issues. Um, it's already a platted roadway. Of course, it's not improved. I believe there's a single family house on the one side of the, the parcel and, and maybe an undeveloped parcel or part of a lot on the south side of that dedicated area. All Are right. Any, any other questions? Um, I guess what we're looking for tonight is our recommendation to the council on uh, resurveying these properties. Is anybody willing to make a motion to do so? I'll make the motion to recommend this to council. All right. I saw a hand up too. Was that uh, Robinson? You're muted. Would that be a second? Uh, there you go, Tom. So I heard a okay. motion by Schumacher. Were you seconding? Are you okay to second, Tom? Yeah, sure. Okay. And did you have a question? Okay. No. Any, anybody else have questions? Just my dogs. <laughs> No, but I, I I do I do think it's a good question about the the traffic load um, by creating the extra units. But as long as everyone's comfortable with it, I mean, it, it what helps is that it's a very short cul-de-sac, so you're not going to have extra load because it's longer. So that helps. But all right, so we have a motion and a second. Hearing no further questions, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That motion carries. So that takes us to item number six, which is a request for Habitat for Humanity to rezone the properties at 1114 and 1115 Able Court. Right now they're SR4. They're looking to rezone them to TR6, which is two family. And we have an opportunity for a public hearing. But before we go in that, maybe uh, Director Shield, if you just want to do a quick overview. Yeah, lots four and nine is shown on the screen are the easternmost lots of the cul-de-sac that have not been developed. They currently are single fam zone for single family um, with the modified lot sizes of the CSM that we're, we're approving tonight. This would accommodate the twin family homes to be constructed on both four and nine if rezoned. Any questions before we open it up for the public hearing? I I have a question, and you know, I think it relates to the fact that we just essentially subdivided um, four and nine into two lots, if I'm understanding correctly. So I'm wondering why it is that we would still need to rezone for two family, because essentially there'll be one family on one of the new smaller lots that's being created, and another family on the other. Isn't that correct? Or are we talking about having two families on even the smaller lots that we just approved? Or yeah, you're you're going to have a total of four units on each side of the roadway, uh, each side of the cul-de-sac. So the TR6 district is the district that allows for the zero lot line setback that we've accomplished. Uh, we're kind of accomplishing at the same time. Normally, you'd have a CSM that would just adjust the perimeter lot lines, and you'd come right. back after after the buildings were constructed to essentially split that lot into two separate ownership parcels. In this case, they're just submitting it as, as one. They'll survey it and cite the building accordingly to have the, the building split by the property line as, plat, as modified by the CSM. Okay. So we'd essentially have two units on nine on the two new parcels and we'd have two units on four. Correct. Okay. Any other questions before we open it up for the public hearing? 
All right, hearing none, we'll close the regular hearing and reopen for the public hearing. And there was nobody signed up for this one. Um, is there anybody that's on the call that wishes to speak? Uh, yes, uh, my name's Joe Burns. I live at 118 Lincoln. And I'd yeah, like an opportunity if possible. Sure, uh, what, was, what was your name, Joe? Joe Werns, W-E-R-N-S. All right, Carl thank Wilson you. On the uh, D there. Okay, yep, go ahead. And uh, we were just concerned to all of us along Lincoln in this affected area of uh, when these woods come down, we've had problems with uh, the uh, people from the apartments shortcutting through our yards, although it's been slowed down by the uh, woods. And we were asking maybe if the developer can put up some sort of barrier to keep people from shortcutting through our yards. Okay. Um, what's going to be required there, uh, Director Shield? Are, are there, there, obviously, there's going to be a curb and gutter. There are no fencing requirements as a result of single family or twin family homes. On lots four, five, eight, or nine would not require by code to have any fencing installed. Okay, and let me understand which property is this uh, is Joe's. Is I'm it, uh, the second one on the west side of Lincoln, second one up from Hamilton. I believe you're lot ten. Yeah, we're uh, we are we back up to lot four on the. Uh, East and south corner of there, the second one up. Our neighbors to the north are the ones that will uh, will be uh, alongside Abel. All right, so I think we have the picture up now. So yeah. you're concerned people are going to cut through where the top of the tree is here? Yeah. They they come up through uh, apartments here, and we've had problems with people shortcutting to get to dollar store and uh, the restaurant and such. The, and we we're just looking if there's something. Because once these trees come down, there'll be nothing mm -hmm. really to stop them. And we we're just hoping if a uh, some sort of barrier could come up along the lot lines between the uh, new. Even if it's temporary, just something to keep the Five traffic percent. at least driven to the uh, right of way Five that percent. it's going to be able court. Okay. Well, the developers are on here, so certainly they can take that into consideration. I don't know if they're in a position to answer that or not. If you are, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm not sure I follow it. Are we talking about uh, traffic, foot traffic coming from the apartment building? Correct. Okay. Well, my suggestion is that our homeowners are going to have the same issues that you have. They will. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, and unfortunately, we don't own the two large lots, which seems to be where the some kind of a barrier to be if there was one. Yeah, you've got the arrow on top of our house. We don't like barriers, but if we can help traffic flow, we're more than happy to. To look at anything. Yeah, if, if Joe, if you could shoot us an email, either myself or Rodney, you can forward it and then maybe you guys could have a conversation offline. Uh, yeah, I can get it out. Copy of the Here, if I could add just from a landscape design perspective. I think uh -huh. one of the reasons that people might be cutting through currently is the, is because the land is undeveloped and it essentially appears to be more unclaimed. And once uh -huh. you have development on those parcels, um, that should deter or psychologically change people's behavior in the sense that they will be unlikely to cut across what appears to be more claimed land. Uh -huh. um, well, I think that's gonna help to some extent. Um, and, and as far as the current property owner who has claimed land, of course, um, because you have all the unclaimed land or appears to be unclaimed land around you, they've already kind of started on their path. 
um, before they get to yours and then they've got to go somewhere. So I think just with the development, it should improve the situation even without adding some sort of barrier, um, but that could also be monitored as well. Yeah, we're, and I don't know how quickly it's gonna- Can I add something? <clears throat> Excuse me. Sure, Could I add something? Yeah, if you can just identify yourself for yeah. the record. Yeah, my name is Tracy Stork. I have my grandfather here with me, David Olson. He's the owner here at 126 Lincoln Avenue. I'm his caretaker, so I've been caring for him and I live here with him. Um, he, you've lived here since what, 1990, what? 19, no. 1995. Yeah, 95. You know, and um, so he, you know, when he moved in, that was all um, the same as it is now undeveloped. Um, all of the neighbors that are to the, the south of us, look towards Hamilton, um, on the corner of Lincoln and Hamilton, and then all those houses that run up to Subway, <clears throat> excuse me, they all have fencing, chain link fence on their backyard line. So people can't cut across that way. They can, however, cut through in between Joe and Charlotte's house, our house, the lot in the spot next to us that has the, that half lot that will essentially be able court. Um, we we also have had numerous issues with um, people coming through the back and um, just look just perusing through our stuff at, at times and you know I get it we can get security cameras if necessary but I guess our concern is as far as for Habitat for Humanity if it's going to be not just two homes but uh, like a four four families that um that wouldn't it be in everybody's best interest to have some sort of fencing that runs uh from hamilton down you know parallel to lincoln in our backyards that will go from essentially hamilton to able court so that way people would be more inclined to develop that new pattern of taking the sidewalk on able court and then just walking around the front of our houses rather than surprising us from behind. Okay. Well, actually there's gonna be a total of four duplexes. So there'd be eight units is okay. my understanding. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify that for you, um, if you wanna send me your contact information, I think this is maybe a conversation that, you know, you could maybe have with the developers, um, mm -hmm. it's kind of it's kind of a neighbor, you know, concern. You know, I don't know if the city wants to be in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, we'd like to see uh, both yeah. parties work together to come up with something that is a good solution. Right, and definitely because uh, us being essentially, where our house is going to be the one that's located on Lincoln, turning into Able Court there. Um, we were curious how close, you know, like the sidewalk would be from you know, distance from our house where the sidewalk would be. And then also got that giant arbor vitae that's right in our front yard. And, you know, I know that I'd spoken. I spoke to an engineer who said that that arbor vitae may or may not need to be removed so i was kind of curious well how close is the sidewalk going to be to our house on the north end hey mayor this is gary blasig of beer becker tracy i was the one that you talked to out there we can talk about this offline and come over there and we can show you where they are and where the property line is and where the sidewalk is this will be a fully improved street with sidewalks so i think anybody coming from the apartments is probably going to come down able court and use the sidewalk okay yeah that's essentially what we would be hoping for yep yeah with four more units on each side of that street they're not really going to be able to cut through those yards anymore okay okay all right and thanks for attending the meeting tonight and if, if you want to talk more it sounds like you've already met we can certainly exchange email addresses. 
Are there any other questions or anybody else that wanted to speak? Uh, this is Joe Warrens. Yeah, I just wanted to get, uh, you want me to email to Rodney? Uh, maybe be some fine. more detail sure. of what we were looking for. Sure. Okay, is that on the, I guess your email's on the city site? Yeah, it is, correct. Okay, I'll just get it from there then. And then that's all the issues we had with it. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks so much. Anybody else? Thank you. But thank you. All right, any questions from the commissioners? Before, I guess we'll come out of the public hearing and we'll go into the regular meeting again. Are there any questions from the commissioners? All right, I just like, none. See, I just like to see a little bit of uh, some, I know you're gonna follow up with some communication with the neighbors there, but just to, just to make sure that we, we've got all the T's crossed, I's dotted, that sort of thing. and that we're attending to to what their concerns are definitely will help uh, exchange con exchange contact information and you know what, whatever we can do to facilitate sounds like they've already got some ideas so that's encouraging um, mr mayor uh yes sir if i may steve hanran again uh we will be sending a uh informational notice to all the neighbors in that area. And unfortunately with our coronavirus situation, it's not as easy as what we would normally do, but we'd like to have a little neighborhood party, excuse me, meeting, not party, a meeting so that we can explain exactly what's going on here. Um, we're just getting to that point. Um, just want you to understand that's how we normally operate. So there will be a meeting. We'll invite the folks to it. I don't know how we're going to do it. Probably have to be outside, um, but we'll uh, invite you guys as well. All right, sounds great. Uh, we're looking for a recommendation to the city council on this one. Anybody willing to uh, make a motion? I'll make the motion to recommend to council. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. All of Chris and Caravello. Any more discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. This will be at the city council. Um, what is it? Next week? Probably yes. next week. Yes. Next week Tuesday at seven and we'll send out an invite. Um, certainly if there's people that want to speak to the city council, you can have three minutes at the beginning of the meeting. If you, you can look on the website for the agenda and there's a sign up sheet link right on the agenda if you wish to speak at city council. And, and thanks for being here tonight. Thanks everyone, appreciate it. Item number seven is a proposed zoning ordinance amendment for a section 78-206, parent seven, parent A, light industrial land use. Um, anything on this one before we go into the public hearing, Rodney? Yeah, it, it clarifies that alcohol and bever be beverage production qualifies as a light industrial use, but only when it's conducted incidental to indoor sales or service. Um, this is really coming to light as part of an application for the cidery to relocate to a downtown facility. We found this kind of deficiency or need to consider this change for that to be a valid or an opportunity for them to do that downtown. Um, but it certainly is something that seems appropriate and is proposed for your consideration. There was a first reading of this ordinance by the council at their last council meeting. Um, and they'll be taking it up as a second reading at the meeting next week, Tuesday. All right, any questions from commissioners before we go into the public hearing on this one? Hearing none, we'll close the regular meeting and reopen for the public hearing. And I don't believe there is anyone signed up to speak on this one, but would anybody wish to speak on 
on item number seven here. Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and reopen for a recommendation to the council. Anybody from the, any commissioners uh, willing to make a motion to this effect? Well, if, if I could make a comment first. Sure, please or, do. Or have a question. Um, as part of, I mean, we're not only just approving um, alcoholic beverage production as qualifying as light industrial, we're, we're approving the, the actual wording here that's being inserted into the ordinance, correct? That's correct. Okay, I, I might argue that at least from my first reading of this and even trying to read it a few times, I find it to be a little bit confusing if the, if, with respect to the part that says, but only when conducted incidental to indoor sales or service. And I think from a commission perspective or even from a city perspective, trying to define what incidental is. I mean, is it a percentage that it can't be 50% of the use or 75% of the, I mean, I, I would think, I don't know if, if uh, Dregney's had a chance to, Attorney Dregney's had a chance to take a look at this and he's comfortable with the clarity of the wording of the statement. I have no problem with alcoholic beverage production qualifying as light industrial use. I'm just worried about that, that the second part of the statement. Yeah, Attorney Dregney is the, I'll call it the author. He, he worked on this. I believe uh, I'll have to look more closely and can do so after the meeting, but pursuant to 8I, I think 8I does provide those um, size limitations. In other words, the, the intent wasn't to create an opportunity to have a manufacturing facility in the downtown district without it having some type of um, other primary use. Um, instead of having it just be the primary use. So um, 8i, and I'll, I'll, I'll work to pull that up yet while we're speaking here, but I believe that outlines the, the additional items you're referring to. Okay, that'll help. All right, do you wanna wait for him to pull that up or do you wanna start making a motion or what would you like to do? Um, I would, since Attorney Dragney has as much trouble with wording as I do, if he feels that this is enforceable, then I will defer to his judgment. Um, and it, it may be because of its reference to 8I. So I'll, I'll trust him on that. All right. So are we still to... looking for a motion, Mayor? Yeah, I am, if you're willing to make it. Yeah, I'll, I'll move to um, recommend that council approve um, this change in um, the zoning ordinance. I'll second that. All right, a second by uh, Commissioner Robinson. And any other questions or comments on this one? So basically what we're trying to do is, obviously we have somebody that wants to um, produce a product in the downtown business district and we're just trying to create language that would allow not only this person, but anybody in the future to do that within reason, I guess is the way I'll put it. And it looks like Rodney pulled something up here, but it's really hard to read. It's yeah, I'll, I'll read it for you. It really does outline some additional restrictions. The total area devoted to light industrial activity shall not exceed 15% of the total area of the buildings on the property or 5,000 square feet, whichever is less. The second item is the production area shall be physically separated by a wall from the other activity areas and shall be soundproof to the level required by 78-709 for adjacent properties. So there was a ref, you know, consideration for those additional standards. Um, I guess one, one last question. The, I'm curious why this ha change had to be made now when we had the Viking Brew Pub, aren't they um, in some ways similar to the cider manufacturer? Is it because um, the cider manufacturers also wholesaling off sites. I mean, is, is there a difference between what the tavern is doing already without this change in ordinance versus what the, the cider manufacturing would be? Yeah, certainly they're very similar. We believe they're probably the same. It might have to do with the timing of when that one went in and what ordinances were in place at the time, but certainly we've identified this issue as being a, a a needed item to rectify for this particular application. Excellent. Any other questions or comments? 
Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? That motion carries. Item number eight is a request by Joseph Barrett of Marchand Cidery for a conditional use permit for an indoor commercial entertainment use and for light industrial activities, incidental in indoor sales. And that would be the cider manufacturing at 124 West Main Street, also known as the movie theater. Uh, we do have a public hearing for this one as well. Um, you wanna review this before we go in, Director Shield. You're muted. Sorry about that, thank you. Um, the packet actually includes the resolution. It also includes the site plan or building um, layout that they're proposing for the indoor use. This conditional use would allow the tavern use and for the light industrial activities incidental to indoor sales for their site or manufacturing operation. If there's any questions, we entertain those as well. Are there any questions before we go into the public hearing? Um, just the one. So when we're evaluating the incidental use, and in I believe it was 15% that you read to us, Rodney, we would only calculate that based on the area identified as manufacturing area on the building layout plan, not so much the storage and Bob. I mean, how does that work? Because I me, mean, if we combine the manufacturing area and the and the storage and bottling area, um, unless unless we're including the whole basement as part of that percentage calculation. Yeah, I think both would work actually because uh, certainly this does have a full basement under it, so it's very very large with that basement. But the primary focus would be the manufacturing area. Okay. Have we been able to determine with them yet whether they're pressing on site or whether they're buying concentrate and diluting? Um, I believe, do I see Joseph I'm, on the call here? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so we had a question that's come up a couple times about the pressing and the waste and what would happen with that. Maybe you can help us out with that. Uh, yes, so. All right, I'm right here. Uh, so, yeah, the majority of our operations, it's actually pressed off site at the different orchards that we work with. The any pressing on site would be minimal just for some local customers that are local orchards that come have cider made there. Uh, just privately held small orchards. But the majority of our processing is either juice coming in from offsite, pressed from a few different suppliers, uh, or having it picked up from the orchard pressed there. But it isn't like concentrate that's diluted either. All right. But the, uh, the waste that what we've done in the past with the waste is actually take it to the Dane County compost pile off of 12 and 18. So they okay. accept it as part of their compost waste. We've talked to some farmers about it, but due to how like apples are, a lot of times they don't want to use as much. So composting it is a, the best other option. All right, well, that answers the question I would have had a little bit later. Um, I've got some more specific process questions, um, but I can save those until after we do a public hearing here. The main okay. question I had was just whether it was pressed on site or and what that waste stream would be. I would say 95% of Everything we do is off-site, pressed, or juiced, delivered to us from various suppliers. Okay. All right. Any other questions before we go into the public hearing? All right. Very none. We'll close the regular meeting.
be open for the public hearing. Um, nobody was signed up for this one, but is there anyone wishing to speak at the public hearing? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and reopen for the regular uh, order of business here. So we're looking for a recommendation. There is a resolution in the packet. I would entertain a motion for the resolution. I'll make the motion for that. All right, is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Robinson. Any discussion on the resolution or the materials in the packet? Um, I, got, I just want to get uh, just a couple more process questions to Joe if he's open for a few more questions. Sure. Uh, careful, Joe, he's a science guy. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm naturally always concerned about about water, wastewater, and that sort of thing. Um, I, I imagine that you're probably going to have a, a, a decent amount of stainless steel in there for your processing. Correct. Yes. All right. Uh, what do you use for your? Or how how often do you do your clean in place, or uh, what type of materials are you using? Caustic, acid, both, neither. Um, no, I don't usually use caustic acid. Uh, most of my cleaning is done with a brewery and winery wash called One Step, which uses right. oxygen to uh, sanitize, because I try to limit the amount of chemical use in my facility. Do you know if that one results in a, in a neutral pH in your wastewater? What was that? Do you know if this, uh, if your clean in place uh, results in a neutral pH in your wastewater in your uh, discharge? I don't know. That hasn't come up in any of the licensing that I've gotten or inspections. I could check that and make adjustments based if there is an issue at all. All right, I was actually just looking up what this material is. It is a it is a percarbonate, so you're gonna have maybe a slightly low pH coming out of there. You're gonna have a slightly acidic pH coming out of there, but it shouldn't be um, shouldn't be any big deal. Um, what kind of water volume do you think that that you would be using at least? So if if you are um, not doing any, you're not doing dilution of anything, so therefore it would probably come from your cleaning and Correct, or yeah. anything like that. Do you have a uh, an idea of what your, your water volume usage might be? I mean, I wouldn't expect it to be any higher really than what it currently is at my location. What, I'd, what about um, do you have for that location? I'd have to check with the water utility because it's actually, I don't get the bill personally because it's something included in my rental there. Okay. But it's very minimal considering we don't dilute and we don't use any water at all in any of our products. It's all, all right. fresh juices and honey Got it. and sugars. Perfect. Um, okay, so if that is something that that uh, uh, utilities is already with, then I can follow up with them for for some other questions on that one. Correct. Yeah. I would just it would be interesting to see what usage. I haven't looked at it, but I'm guessing my current water usage is probably very low. Okay. It was a lot. I'm sure I would have heard something from the property owner if it's sure <laughs> included. All right, and again, I'd be curious about when, when you are doing a clean in place with this one step material as to what your what the pH of your effluent is that's coming off of that, just out of curiosity. All right, I could check that and get back to you. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Tools. All right. All right, okay. and uh, my other questions I'll follow up with Director Weiss. All Feel right. free to email me if you have any questions directly at all. Um, Fantastic. I can show you the operations currently, but it's not a very large operation 
if last year we you can check our records online we produced about six thousand gallons of wine and cider which okay. is about the fourth a fourth of the wisconsin requirement for being a small winery which is under twenty five thousand gallons per year the federal requirement is 150 under 150,000 gallons so by most respects we're considered a very small operation got it and then you'd be you'd move your entire operation into there and vacate your other space correct okay all, all right. right i've got a fair amount of fermentation background so as long as you're, as long as you're i'd done. love to see it yeah i mean it's a pretty basic process, but it takes a lot of took me years to finally learn the like exact recipes and methods behind it. So it's always a learning process. Yep, it's a fine art for sure. It is. Thanks, Joe. Yep. Are there any other questions? Yeah, this is Phil. I have one brief sure. question is I, I'm just curious if there are detectable odors that would be, uh, any odors that would be detectable outside of the facility from the process. Um, if everything is going perfect with fermentation, it doesn't really give off much odor at all. But if there was any issue at all, we could look into like a, there are like CO2 air scrubbers that you can add to your tanks if it ever did become an issue, but our production is so small that it, in my 2,500 square foot facility, no one has ever even mentioned any smell at all. And I've never even really noticed that that much of a smell throughout my years of making it. But it is something that if we get larger and it becomes an issue, it um, is something that could be rectified right at the tank level. A lot of breweries are actually looking into uh, taking the CO2 that is released and then uh, compressing it back and using it to serve your cider or beer then. So then there'd be almost zero emissions at all. Okay, thanks. Um, are you, do you have plans to, like, since you're gonna have so much more space, are you thinking doubling your output that you currently have or tripling or just gonna wait and see? I'm just curious. Um, wait and see, but the plan would be to, my projections were to like increase by 50% over the next two years. We've been kind of slowly growing since 2014. So it's with the infrastructure and everything that you need, it's it's not like an overnight thing to double your production. But within the 5,000 square feet would probably limit it to a certain amount. Okay, cool, thanks. All right, last call for questions from commissioners. Yeah. Can you hear can you hear me, Mayor? Yes. All right. So so my my question is just more maybe just a caution that I I don't want you to ever run into an issue where you run into problems with the way the code defines incidental. And so I don't know if there's ever you've got such a huge basement here. Um, but I don't know if you ever have plans or if it currently there'll be some of the manufacturing that might take place within the basement or if it's larger, just that cold storage and barrel storage. Um, but I would hate to have it get into an issue where you, with your expansion, that you end up going beyond that 15% incidental, um, where the location would then become problematic for you. So it sounds like at your current, at your current production levels, we're good. Uh, I just want to make sure that we kind of keep in the back of your mind and 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 make sure we make sure the property and the building works for you in terms of our current code requirements. The plan for the basement is still mainly storage. 
the temperature down there actually isn't the best for fermentation anyways it's perfect cellar for storage but it's a little low of a temperature to actually do production down there anyway okay thank you yep all right any other questions okay uh hearing none we have a motion on the table uh all in favor of the resolution say aye 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 and any opposed that motion will be at city council next week thank you joseph thanks um item number nine is a request from the lutz brothers investment abc home specialist for a conditional use permit um, and site plan approval to construct a new building at 520 Business Park Circle. Um, this one also um, has the ability for a public hearing. It looks like we're going to be making a rec recommendation on one item and then uh, the plan commission has the authority to do the site plan approval. Anything uh, before we go into the public hearing, Rodney? you muted again thank you mayor um business park north committee just met just met just prior to this meeting and uh, approved it based on the covenant review and it's before the plan commission because it's a second building on the same site which requires a conditional use that's the primary conditional use aspect of it and then of course we've got the site and building plan layout separately from the cup so we can open it up for the public hearing if there aren't any initial questions but that's the lay of the land it's a warehouse facility with the existing building remaining that will be utilized as their offices for their operation and the cold storage facility in the in the back part of the site uh, is not planned to have um, plumbing or heating Mayor, Mayor, now you got caught muted. It was bound to happen. We'll close the regular meeting and reopen for the public hearing. And it looks like I have uh, Jim Bant is signed up to speak. Are you with us, Jim? Uh, this is this is Jim Lutz. I'm I'm here now. I finally got back on. Somehow I got kicked out of the meeting. Oh, uh, but okay. So, and I think Jim is on as well, and Peter uh, from Burst uh, Surveying. All right, go ahead, Rodney will run some maps if he wants something for us to reference. Is there anything you guys wanted to speak to before we deliberate? Uh, basically just here to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. All right. Anybody else wish to speak at the public hearing? Hi, this is Tim Miller from Isodex. I, um, if I can talk for a minute, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Go ahead, Tim. I, I own uh, the building just a couple doors, I guess, to the west of there. And from, from what I've heard, I, I don't have any objection to, you know, what, what they're looking to do. I, I don't know a lot about what the intent is. And I'm happy to hear that they have reviewed the, the covenants of the, the business park and it sounds like it's in line with that. I was wondering if somebody could tell me a little bit more about what's planned with that location. Who would like to do that? I can do that if you'd like. Uh, uh, yeah, basically we were a home improvement company and we've been in business over 30 years. Um, but the building is, is to store our product inside. Um, we do seamless steel siding and gutters and windows and so forth. And we're just looking for a little more room so we can keep everything inside and, and a little less congested than we are in our Madison location. Um, the offices that are already there are, will be our, our offices for myself and my brother and uh, our, you know, my secretary. Great. Thank you. One of the concerns that we've, uh, started to become sensitive to, you know, we came into the uh, business park there 
because it is, you know, it's light industrial, it's office park, and we're very sensitive to noise. Uh, and when it, we're trying to conduct operations there and we hear loud noises uh, to the point, especially when a lot of communication today is by phone and Zoom sessions, it becomes kind of difficult to conduct business. Um, is there anything that's going to be creating a lot of noise in your facility? Actually, we are, the facility will be used for storage only. Um, we, we won't be building anything or basically making any noise whatsoever. Uh, I would guess we'd be about the quietest building there. Um, <laughs> the guys come in, load up, uh, you know, and then go to the job and normal jobs take a week or two and then they come back and load up again. Um, we're, we're very neat and clean and, and definitely quiet. That's great. Thank you. Sounds like you'd be a welcome neighbor. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Anybody else wish to speak at the public hearing? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and reopen uh, for our business. And as I mentioned, we have two items on there. The first one is a recommendation to the city council. Was that a resolution, Rodney? Yes. Okay. Anybody have any questions on the resolution or willing to make a motion? I will recommend that we approve the conditional use permit. And is there a second? I'll second. All right. And the resolution is up on the screen. Does anybody have any questions about it? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. So that recommendation will go to the council. And then the next item would be the site plan. And do you want to walk us through this, Rodney, or does somebody else want to? Um, this one here, I, as I mentioned, I believe that the plan commission has authority on this one. I'm starting to catch on to this after two years. You're correct, Mayor. So the site plan shows the additional building being constructed on the site. It does show the, the two entrance points into the new facility, one on the east side and one on the west side of the site. Stormwater management improvements on the site to accommodate the additional impervious area that's being created and the, the uh, photometrics and landscaping plan are also provided. Anybody have any questions on the site plan? Uh, <clears throat> I do primarily on um, the exterior wrap of the building. Um, from what I can tell from the, the stuff that's been submitted, um, the, the color choice for the exterior of the, of the new addition, the cold storage that's been referred to, is this cool straw gold, is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. It, it's it's somewhat of a top color. It's not gold. It's it's a tan, um, and I think Jim Bant uh, would know more about that. But it, it's it's not gold. <laughs> what what is the? I'm trying to remember the color of the existing building, your office building. That's kind of a top color. Um, you know, it right now it's an uh, aluminum siding in somewhat of a, that was the closest color we could find to it. Um, being in the siding business, there's a pretty good chance if in the next year we'll be reciting the front building to match, but um, you know, we just, that depends on time frames and so forth. With, with what's, I guess this is, and again, not a major issue, but it is a little bit of a discomfort that I have in when you look at the at least what's been provided to us in our packet for the color of that cool straw gold, which is, is really a pretty bright color, considering the size of the building. Um, I and I, and, the, and from my perspective, I if I was you, I'd want to have attention drawn more to my office building and have the the warehouse complex or the cold storage building kind of recede and almost disappear versus draw a lot of attention to it. 
Um, it would seem like another color, maybe like the cool Sierra tan or something along those lines might help tone down that such a large um, building. Um, it looks like the, the roofing on that might be, is it, is it gonna be the green um, metal roofing material that's gonna go on it or was it a different color for the roof? Yeah, the, I, I believe the roofing was gonna be the green metal. Um, the, yeah. the nice thing about it, it's gonna be a continuous slope to the rear. So I don't know if from the front you'll see any roofing, um, but, and, and I'm with you on that, uh, on that other color as well. My brother and I went back and forth and he said, well, which one is gonna look the closest? And, but we're not set on a certain color. We're just, you know, if, if, if anyone has any recommendations, we're fine with it. We, we want it to blend and, you know, we want the front building to stand out with, and that's why we're going through the extensive landscaping to, to make everything look nice around there and the new building. So, we're, I mean, we, we're not set on that color. We just were told we had to pick a color and we thought that one would be an easy pick. Yeah, I, I know it, it's never on a reproduced piece of paper like this, it's never a, 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 a complete match. Sometimes you almost have to have the material in front of you. I just know in some cases, the color looks really good when you're holding it and you got a small sample, but then you blow it up on a building that size and it just becomes a little bit overwhelming. And so I guess I would just, I would try to pick a color um, that is a little bit more toned down than your, your office building. And, and it sounds like you're of the same mind, something that's gonna be a little bit more muted or um, not quite as bright so that it more recedes versus and, and keeps the attention on your office building, which is what you want. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I believe the building to the, um, well, to the left as we're facing our building now, uh, that's kind of a light tan with kind of a brownish reddish trim. And, um, you know, uh, I guess my brother thought that would blend well too, but I mean, I, I we're open to anything. We're not, like I said, we don't have to have that color. It's, um, it's just whatever's gonna, whatever's going to blend the best and, and make everyone happy. It's, it's going to be new and clean and neat and, and that's all we care about. Yeah. Well, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll leave it at that and I'll trust your judgment on that. Cool Sierra tan is worth, I think, considering based on the reproduction I have, please stay away from any of those that say white. <laughs> this would be way too bright. Um, but other than that, I, 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 I think you've got the same idea I do. So thanks. Thank you. All right, so it looks like, do we have any other questions? Okay, hearing none. So we, uh, we're looking for a motion to approve the site plan. Anybody willing to make that? I'll make that motion. Motion by Robinson, is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Schumacher. Um, any last final comments on this one? You can always reach out to Commissioner Barman on the side and, and talk about colors. He loves to talk about colors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's good at it, too, though. That's the other part. I don't want to leave that out. Yeah, uh, it, we're open to suggestions. We just, want to, we just want it to look good, and we plan on being there, you know, forever. So, um, it, you know, we're open for any help we can get. Yeah, and he's not afraid to talk to your brother, either. <laughs> I sometimes I am, but that's good. <laughs> Just give me All a call. Right. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? None opposed. That motion carries. Thank you. So the one item will be at council next week, and then the site plan is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 10 is a request by, I don't want to butcher your name too bad, uh, Deidre Bozek for a conditional use permit for an indoor commercial entertainment use, a youth theater group at 318 Water Street. Uh, this one also has uh, a need for a public hearing. Anything you want to review with us, uh, Rodney? This site is mid-block, uh, one block, or the block south of Main Street on Water Street. 
it, it's currently a facility that I think this would be a welcome use there. Uh, and it's nice to know that there is actually a youth theater group that's actually practicing in Stoughton and looking for a site to do so. And this is conditional within the district and therefore it would need to go through this CUP process in order to get approved for that location. Any questions from commissioners before we go into the public hearing? All right, hearing none, we'll close our regular meeting and open it up for the public hearing. Uh, nobody was signed up to speak on this one, but if anybody wishes to, uh, feel free to let me know now. And I'm not sure if there's anyone here from the from the theater group. I'm here. I'm Deirdre. Oh. I'm back. All right. Hopefully, I didn't ruin your name for you no. as I tried to pronounce it. You want to tell us a little bit about what you're going to do there? Did you purchase the building? I did purchase the building. Yes. Um, we just we want to use the building for um, rehearsal uh, space mainly. Um, yeah, we just want to. We we've been renting spaces or using other theater spaces, um, and we just want a place to call our own. That's awesome. Glad to have you. Thank you. Any questions or comments are uh, for while we're in the public hearing? Otherwise, we can close the public hearing and reopen for our regular business here. And any questions or comments from commissioners on this one? Um, Mayor, if I could. Sure. It's not a color question there. <laughs> um, it, it, seem, it seems to me that one, I like the use, um, not only just because I support youth theater, but it's also just entertainment and theater down along the river and it just comes into my head. I didn't know if there was any way, uh, I think of some of the open air opportunities for theater, um, didn't know with this particular building and just looking at the site, if there was ever a way to do small productions out along the river um, to utilize not only the building and the space on that first floor, which you're planning to do, uh, but if there was ways to be able to connect, maybe if you even did it in partnership with the Naughty Norsky next door um, to be able to, because they've got that nice, beautiful terrace area that they landscaped, that periodically being able to have productions or, uh, out there on, on their terraced area in association with your building. Um, I also know that there's, if I remember right, walking along Water Street there, I believe the building just to your north there is the one that doesn't have a roof and is pretty much just a shell uh, at that location too. I just was wondering if you've ever had any thoughts as you look at your building for being able to take advantage of the fact that you're on Water Street there and along the Hare River. I have actually um, down the line. I would love to um, maybe acquire that building that's next to us and make that into an outdoor area for us. That is something that we've looked at, but we want to um, focus on this building first, I guess. Um, but yeah, that is something that we've considered. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> Any other questions from commissioners? How long had that uh, building been vacant for? Uh, when we bought it, it was a laundromat. And it okay, was a so, operational laundromat. Okay, still functioning, all right. Um, I know you said you, you weren't planning to do a, a, a lot of reno, renovation work in there, um, but uh, is, it, is it conducible for, for what you want to do with it? Yes. So um, basically right now it's just an open area. Um, we are planning on um, adding another bathroom in there, um, but that's about it. All right, and we're there, uh, I can't remember if I read that in here. Are there tenants that do live upstairs, did you say? Or I, I can't remember if I read that within here or not. There are tenants that live upstairs, yes. Okay. Okay, 
I, I had one quick question, Rodney. Is this one in the overlay district? I do not believe this one is in the overlay district. Okay. I believe Let's it's be... south of the alley, so I don't believe it is. Okay. But the use wouldn't uh, be the the use wouldn't be di dictated by the design overlay district. Okay. Sense. And then one thing I wanted to mention is if, if you're looking at doing some renovation, our redevelopment authority uh, potentially might be able to help you with some revolving loan funds. And if that's oh. something you want to talk about, um, we can connect offline and and I can steer you in the right direction on that. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Okay, hearing none. Uh, so we're looking, are we still in the public hearing? Did I close that? You closed close that. Okay, I thought so. So we're looking for a recommendation to the city council and we have a resolution here. Anybody prepared to make a motion? I, I make move. Go ahead, Todd. I can second it as well. That's fine. All right. I think there was a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. So that'll be at City Council next week as well. Looks like we're going to have a busy night. Item number 11 is a request from Michael Chandler from Farmers Insurance Group for approval of a new signage at 334 East Main Street within the downtown design overlay zoning district. Uh, Director Scheel? This is within the downtown design overlay district and is subject to your consideration. And you can recognize the signage is already in place um, and that's what's being sought uh, for approval. All right, any questions or comments on this one? Um, I did not see in here where it mentioned what the material of the signs were. Um, particularly material uh, on the side of the building that faces west. Um, the, it looks to me like the underneath the, the or near the entrance that sign appears to be either kind of a wood material or a, 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 a plastic material. But I'm kind of curious what the one on the side of the building is on the west facing. I think Mr. Chandler's online here. Maybe he can help answer some of the questions. Uh, the the sign is all metal. So that that one's an all metal sign. Yep. Okay. So that is not. I'm I'm sorry. Go ahead. So that that sign is not lit at all. So that nope. it's okay. All right. That helps a lot. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right, here and on. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the signage. I'll make that motion. Motion by Robinson. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. No. Second. Still take it. Okay. Second by Caravello. Any more discussion on the sign? Um, I would just make a recommendation on the, the again, that west facing, the, the building on the exterior wall, the uh, or the sun on the exterior wall of the building, um, that it, if you can get power to it, it might be nice to have a couple gooseneck lights um, that would light that sign indirectly. Um, you put the gooseneck, maybe one or two goosenecks over the, on the top of that, if there's power to it, that could light, light that up at night, that would look nice. Can I make a comment? Sure. Yeah. Uh, it actually, it can be a lit sign. I've just never lit it because I was in McFarland before and they wanted a little bit more money for a lit sign and I just chose not to because I really didn't have a reason to, but I actually can light the sign. Uh, if, if, if it's all metal, how can it be lit? Well, there, there's, there's a lighting mechanism in there. there there's place for, um, uh, can't the tubular lights? 
can't think of what they're called. So then the actual sign that says farmer's insurance, that is a plastic sheet? Uh, well, yeah, I guess that part is, is a plastic sheet. Yeah, my apologies. But the entire frame is not all. Because this looks then, I mean, that's that was my main issue. When you told me it was metal, that's different. If this is an internally lit sign, um, it, I believe our ordinance, um, our ordinance, uh, our design ordinance speaks against internally lit signs, which is, why I was which is why I was recommending the gooseneck indirect lighting. Okay, then I'll um, never let. Am I, am I correct, Rodney, in my memory of the, of the kind of disallowing the plastic internally lit signs? Yes, I believe you're correct. So so what do we do about, I mean, that leaves me in a conundrum. It's one thing to say I'm not going to turn it on, but if we approve the a light that is able to be turned on, um, how can we stipulate it that, that it never, I mean, it is, I mean, technically it is a internally lit plastic sign. Which is disallowed would, in, in the in the zone. So that would I'd have to number one purchase the the lights for it, obviously. Number one. Number two, I'd have to get power out to it, of which I don't have power out to it at all. Um, number three, I have no desire to light it. It I that's you know, I mean it's an advertising piece for me and that's about it. And then you know, majority of the traffic through here is during daylight. So um you know, I can sign something too if you want me to. I think it ultimately just becomes an enforcement issue if it becomes a backlit sign and the ordinance doesn't allow for that. He'd have to actually come in for an electrical permit in order to have it become electrified anyhow. And if it would prevent that from occurring, um, I, I don't think the issue is that it would be lit at this point. Then can we somehow tag it that if it does come in for a permit? Yeah. That, 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 okay. If that's possible, then that I could see that as being a check and balance. Yep. All right. We can't get anything by Commissioner Barment. Well, it's just we want to be careful about establishing precedent that another business comes in and says they were allowed to put up a sign that is plastic and has the ability to be internally lit, and then we have to say, why did we just approve it? Oh, that's a good catch. All right, any other questions or comments? All right, hearing none, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, thanks for being here, Michael. Thank you, everybody. All right, item 12 is a request by Mark Cruiser, OPN Architects for Site Plan, approval of a building addition and parking lot expansion for the Dane County Sheriff's Office, Southeast Precinct at 125 Veterans Road. And most of you might be familiar with this building. It's the Brown Building that had been used for human services. And my understanding is it's transitioning to the Sheriff's Office. Um, Director Shiel, you wanna walk us through the rest? I'll just give you a quick synopsis. Uh, there's certainly applicants and designers uh, from the team that can provide better background. Um, it is a, a re um, change of use on the site for their operation. They are doing substantial modifications to the, the parking and configuration of the site, as well as increasing landscaping. Um, they've requested from the DOT access for emergency exit onto US Highway 51. Um, there is one particular note that staff has raised that uh, is not currently included on the, uh, the site plan in front of you, is to extend sidewalks from the south property line to the north property line or to county or to Highway 51 um, along Veterans Road. Um, there are some challenges there, but we think that there's a good pedestrian uh, reason to have that connection be extended at this time. Um, I, I'd prefer to have the applicants give an overview. They put some time and energy into putting together this site plan and building plan and can offer better specifics at this point. Okay, and who is here from OPN? Good evening. My name is Mark Cruiser with OPN Architects on behalf of uh, Dane County Public Works. 
there's precinct. And um, if there are some specific site or especially landscape questions, um, I believe I have either Michael and or Kevin from uh, JSD Professional Services to talk about any of those. Um, but I uh, appreciate the opportunity here. And as, as Rodney summarized, this is an opportunity for us to, to really improve a kind of a forgotten corner here in the city of Stoughton. As you all probably know, the building is um, kind of a bit run down looking and that this county hasn't done much with it uh, the last few years as they've been slowly transferring staff back to their main um, human services offices in, in downtown Madison. And so the last employees left earlier this year. And so the, the uh, sheriff's precinct, you know, the public works has um, identified this building then as ideal for the sheriff's precinct, which is currently out on Highway N north of town a little ways um, and north of the site a little ways. And so it's an ideal location for them, a, a building the county has the opportunity, they already own it, so they have the opportunity to repurpose it. So the, um, the, the uh, as Rodney explained, we are redoing most of the site, uh, redoing all of the parking and uh, and it's most of the landscaping and, and stormwater management. So the building um, currently exists uh, about 10,000 feet, over 10,000 square feet, and we're adding a little under 3,000 square feet to it. Uh, the addition would be um, primarily for for uh, parking, internal parking for four squad cars, and then there's some fenced-in parking for six to eight other squad cars. And we are requesting. Um, Emergency egress only out onto uh, Main Street or Highway 51. Um, in the event of certain emergencies, part of that request is because the county has observed that the uh, Veterans Road does back up uh, with traffic, especially at shift changes with Stoughton trailers. And so that is one of the requests there. And we are working with the Wisconsin DOT. Um, and in the process of the, the DOT explained that. Um, since they had uh, turned down an applicant across the street, they would uh, prefer we go through an appeal process. Um, and that's where it's currently at. And so we're waiting to hear back from them. So that is one um, request we'd like to have an opportunity to discuss tonight. And then um, I believe we have pretty much most of the other details worked out other than uh, we were also then um, made aware that we, that the city would like a sidewalk along that west property line, and we're requesting to not have to do as well. One, the sidewalk would lead um, to the end of the property, and then it wouldn't go anywhere beyond that for maybe a long time. And so that would lead people down to the end, and then they'd, they'd uh, possibly um, dangerously try to cross Veterans Road at certain times of the day. So um, the other uh, thing, and, and uh, as Rodney brought up this site, um, on the north side, what's shown in the kind of reddish color, shaded in the reddish color, that's the existing sidewalk along the north property line. And uh, then in the blue is what we would have to do if we were to add it on the west side. And the reason why it's kind of curving there at the, at the north side is it would have to go around um, some utilities. Um, and then all the way down, it, it primarily would cover the existing storm uh, Excuse me, the existing sanitary sewer, which instead of being in the middle of the street, uh, Veterans Road, it's actually, you know, just outside of the property line here where the sidewalk would want to go. So there would be significant costs in uh, in that, especially in the future if that gets tore up and then the sidewalk has to be replaced. Um, there, there's a manhole that's in the way. There's a electrical vault in the way. A transformer in the way. There's uh, um, guide wires for one of the power poles at the corner in the way. So all of those things, uh, you know, add cost to that, and and uh, and um, again, we feel that sidewalk kind of is dead ended anyway. So, so that um, I guess will be open to questions. Uh, the building, you know, we it is a metal panel building uh, proposed, recladding it, um, but it is uh, concealed fasteners. Um, so if you have any questions architecturally or site plan, we're open for questions. 
All right, any questions or comments from commissioners? I was curious about the overall lighting because uh, I see that uh, at least on one of the drawings that there are some some light poles in that that will be, or at least one that's going to be taken away uh, with the, the new design in there. Um, will the, the, the lighting of that parking area be increased or, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you'll have it within the, the recommendation that it needs to be uh, at the property line, um, just for thinking about the, uh, the one adjacent residential neighbor. Um, the others are business, but not, not that to say they don't, they don't count for anything, but uh, whatever the overall, if the overall lighting will increase in, in this area. Sure, and um, if this is the um, most recent set of plans I sent up today, um, sent to the city today, the last page would show the lighting um, picture layout and the, uh, the light levels, but we're really uh, proposing some all new lighting for the site that will be uh, you know directed downward so it meets dark sky standards, um, LED lighting, uh, and so we feel the that uh, light level plan meets this current um, city ordinances. Um, okay, great. Or, you know, I just wondered because I know you're having light levels at property lines. You know, so. Okay, I knew you just had some areas out there where you were going to have squads potentially parked in there, and I wasn't sure if you lit those any more for security reasons or or not. Um, not really. The uh, you know, we do have those fenced in, you know, um, we will have that fenced with a chain link type of fence. Um, but really, it would just have normal parking lot lighting levels. Wait, and then it's, okay. um, what I forgot to mention was, you know, we do have significant uh, buffering, landscape buffering along both the east property line and the south property line, because those are both residential properties adjacent to this. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, Any other questions? Mayor, if I could, this sure. is Todd. Um, well, first, I'll just start with a question. On, on the metal siding, um, are the fasteners of that metal siding, are they hidden or are they exposed? Yes, they're concealed. So um, yes, there is actually a clip that goes on first and the metal panel connects to the clip. And then another clip is put on on the other side in the metal panel. So it, it has no, no um, exposed fastener. Okay, so I guess then my comment related to siding, it's, it, it, if it's not an exposed fastener, it sounds like if I'm understanding our ordinances properly, um, that it would, would, it would meet the letter of the ordinance. Um, but I, I will tell you, I'm a, I'm a little uncomfortable with the aesthetic of the building. Um, you, you're, I, I, the exterior is gonna change dramatically and, and I'm not sure um, the the choice of siding material and color is going to be an improvement. Uh, and honestly, I don't know if it's going to look good on this corner. Um, we have a, a development proposal across the street, Quick Trip, and they're planning to do significantly, I mean, almost the majority of it masonry. And then across the street here, we've got one that is all metal, almost all metal siding, and then with periodic um, faux wood. And I'll be honest, the, the placement of it to, to me is, is not very attractive in, in terms of the choice of, of where colors go and where materials go. Um, but again, it, it, I don't know if I can, I can, I don't know if I can vote against it just because of aesthetic, but I, I don't know if there's opportunities to improve the look of the exterior um, based on the renderings and the the photos of the materials that are chosen. So I don't know if, if there's any, if there's been discussion, I mean, if this is, I, I guess I'd be open so to, the, I guess I'd be open to the opinion of my fellow commissioners. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll step in and say, I agree with you with uh, Commissioner Barman. Um, is a massive change in appearance from what's there now. Right now you have a building that blends with somewhat 
blends into the neighborhood and uh, and into the landscape. And what you're going to be seeing is a a metal building. We need another metal building in this in this this town. We have enough of them. Uh, I'm not thrilled with the exterior myself either. Any other comments from commissioners on the, the building? The only comment I want to make is I think the exterior is actually an improvement from the way it looks right now. And uh, yeah, that's the only comment I had. Okay. Um, I had a a couple quick questions. I guess the first one is, is will the site plan change if you don't get the DOT to approve the access point? So if, this, if we don't get the access point, um, we would just, you know, eliminate, of course, that and the, and the garage door to the north. Um, and, and so, um, and then just the minor re, you know, grading that would, that would, you know, resolve that. Um, but otherwise, the site plan would pretty much stay the same. Um, what, have, what have you applied for? The there? Is, the it a, is it a full access or is it a right in, right out? Or what, what are you proposing to them? Yeah, so what we're proposing is to, to is egress only and then to go left or right. Okay. So you're saying that the site plan itself won't change, though? Right, other than the eliminating, you know, the, the, the egress path, you know, the paving. Okay. And, and the yeah. to the so we wouldn't have to come back and amend this or anything, would we, Rodney? No, I think you'd be fine if you approve it with it. You know, the commission may have an opinion about whether it's a, a supportable position to have it, access 51 based on other discussions of other proposals in the area. Um, but certainly, I don't think it would have to come back if it was not approved by the DOT. Okay. And then the other question is, so the proposal that we have here, does that include or not include the sidewalk? I, I think you said that it didn't. Yeah. yeah. So this was just a diagram to show, and then in the, in the light blue lettering on the left, was calling out all of the utility items that are in the in the way of that sidewalk. Yeah, this so is wrong. Cer certainly there's some design some issues that were just raised that would need to be worked through. P placing a sidewalk over top of an, an underground sanitary sewer is not not a detrimental situation. Sanitary sewer is put under a street all the time. So I don't think that aspect of it would be in it itself a major challenge. Obviously, there are some things that would need to be worked through. Um, the commissioners have been very, very outspoken about sidewalks in this area, most notably on the north side of this intersection, northwest corner. So it, that that's why it heightens the awareness to this particular corner. Um, the, the fact that there's a concern about it not leading to any place, um, there actually is a, a multifamily development just to the south that at this point doesn't have any sidewalk um, crossing opportunity or north northbound opportunity. A new sidewalk extension to that point would actually facilitate that movement to a controlled intersection, but it also would at this that point make it a, a very good idea to have sidewalk installed in front of the apartment complex going forward. So staff has highlighted it as a concern and think that's worth trying to incorporate as part of this total redevelopment of the site at this time because uh, now would be the best time to do it, if at all possible. So I guess to clarify, if if the commissioners want to approve this with the sidewalk, do they have to amend the resolution to do so? I believe our staff review letter, which is one of the conditions of the resolution, requires it to be installed. Okay. And I'll confirm that before you take your final action, but I'm, I believe that's what it says in our Okay. Our and then my final one, I guess, to the developers, are, are you guys open at looking at other colors or on the exterior of the building? Is that something you, you can look at? Or are you guys pretty much married to this? So the, uh, you know, the, 
and I think Eric Curtis, the architect with the county of the works, may be on as well. So I'd have to be happy to let him speak up as the owner's rep. But um, you know, the existing building built in 1980 is original siding. You know, isn't built to the standards we would do today, where you know we think there's only um, um, some you know, felt paper and then some sheathing and then it's insulation. There's no weather barrier on existing building, things like that. So we were, you know, we're gonna go to where this building is brought up to today's construction standards from an envelope standpoint, so that it has energy efficiency, um, you know, for the, for at least its next life as a sheriff's precinct. And, and so all of the siding is gonna come off. It's mostly probably, there's probably a lot of rot and things like that, that so it's not, it's not worth keeping. Um, and so then the county's wish was to, to have um, some kind of a uh, cladding that would be low maintenance. Um, you know, like cedar siding's not usually considered low maintenance or any kind of, um, you know, real wood it would really be considered low maintenance. So that was where the metal panels came, um, partly also to stay within their budget. Um, the lower base is, is new brick. We're tearing up stone off because again, we can't, you can't take off part of the cladding and leave some of it on and then still create a new um, watertight and airtight envelope. So we have to take all the cladding off and there's, therefore we're, we're replacing stone with brick, which is you know, nearly as good quality as stone, but maybe less expensive because of the labor is a little less intensive on brick than on stone. Um, and then the, the wood look is a, is, you know, is a, um, you know, kind of helps tie it into the original building, um, as well as the you know, kind of the residential residences nearby, um, but more as an accent because it's a more expensive material. Um, so use more as an accent than as the main material. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand what the other options would be that would be as cost effective, and I don't have the answer. So I would look to the commissioners if if you've got any ideas and whether or not you're open to them. If, if I can piggyback off that then, Mayor, since I brought up in the first place, I, I guess it's hard for me to design or redesign or offer an alternative design on a, a, a proposal like this without time. Um, but my, my biggest concern, it's not, I understand that the existing siding is probably in need of repair, if not replacement. I mean, I, I'd understand that. Um, I, I don't necessarily have, while metal siding isn't my first choice, um, it's not disallowed. Um, and so it's not necessarily even the choice of that metal siding. Um, I think it is the massing and the colors and the placement. Uh, I guess if I was to kind of pinpoint it, um, I think the white is too stark uh, for this particular location and for this particular use. Um, and the the wood um, additions, and I know it's, it's more expensive, so that's why I don't understand it. I guess I can see it a little bit underneath the windows because it does kind of draw a little bit of attention to the architecture, um, and maybe on the the um, uh, underneath the gable on the, the ends of the building. Um, but the way it's used around the garage doors um, doesn't work for me from an aesthetic standpoint. Um, and so I guess if I was to draw attention to two things that I think are probably bother me the most. It's the way the wood material is used around the garage doors and the, the, the choice of white as the primary color of the, of the um, metal wrap. Um, if those two things were adjusted, I think it would help me to some extent. Um, I, I um, following up again on some of the other mayor's comments, uh, I am personally uncomfortable um, without a little bit more evidence of the uh, necessity of approving here the e ingress or just egress onto the, the state highway when right across the street with Quick Trip is not allowed to do that. Um, and I understand that you, you have one less, maybe potentially one less intersection to deal with if you're heading east on the highway. But if you're heading west, you still immediately have to, to deal with the same exact intersection you're going to have to deal with if you came out your veterans um, road um, driveway exit. And, and so 
I'm, I'm finding it problematic to prove this without a little bit more evidence of it really increasing safety um, or, or response time or something along those lines for the sheriff's use. And, and I agree with Rodney, I think um, to, to stay true to our form from the commission perspective, I think we need to um, require the use of or the input of the sidewalk along veterans there um, to facilitate pedestrian access. All right, thank you. And it looks like Alder Majewski is next. Uh, just a question off of this. Uh, was there any thought to um, alternative energy sources such as solar? See, they have a south facing, a large south facing uh, roof line. Sure. And we um, did. Uh, in previous renderings, put uh, solar panels on the south um, side of the gable. Um, also pointing out that the existing, you know, we're trying to also save some of the mature trees on that south side, some nice um, honey locusts and some river birch that are a little bit more to the to the southwest side of the existing building. And so we would shade some of that. So, um, but uh, the discussion with the county was that they would certainly like to do that um, but that's from a separate budget. And so um, so then that kind of depends on for them what, what buildings are next in line in their, um, you know, in their portfolio of buildings that, that are due to have uh, solar upgrades because they are working on that pretty aggressively throughout the county. So, so this one may not take priority though. And so that's, that's kind of where we, the discussion we had on that. Um, but the building will be, um, again, we're, Really recliding it, we're increasing insulation to the standards with continuous insulation, um, a new all new mechanical systems. So it's going to, you know, all the new lighting will be LED. So it's all, you know, going to be much more efficient than the existing building. Um, that, I'd be happy to respond to the, um, the siding issue a little bit more as well. Um, so it's a, it's actually an off white color, so it won't be, you know, bright white. Um, it it is going to look to a lot of people like wood because it's you know vertical um vertical orientation and the idea behind that is it's a long low building so we're trying to contrast the, the low horizontalness with you know a little bit of vertical um, um texture to it and then uh you know the then to address the the egress to uh main street um and we understand that that a uh, a uh, convenience store requested access off of uh, Main Street to the north, and um, you know this is a very different use, uh, very different um, amount of traffic going you know egress only again, and it's for first responders to try to have their best access out and to be able to address uh, emergency situations. And again, the the county has observed that the Veterans Road tends to back up during shift changes at Stilton trailers and that's was their primary concern with the site. Okay, any other questions or comments from commissioners? I I would just like to uh strongly uh voice my opinion about the sidewalks as a I think that's essential that that sidewalk along veteran to be included in the plan all right and it looks like it is in the staff um, report any other questions or comments I, I think we probably have to mention I, there was reference in in our packet that there were place a few places where there were vegetation that was planned that was within the the view triangles at either the uh, main intersection or else at the driveways. Um, I think we would need to make sure that those are all um, that they meet the necessary requirements for being for visibility at those intersections and turning points. Sure, and we've uh, taken a look at those and made any adjustments we needed to. Um, that's yeah, that's an easy one. We'd be happy to adjust those. What are you guys looking at getting started? 
So the idea is to try to um, have this ready for potentially bidding um, before the end of the year where construction could start um, potentially this winter with demolition, you know, for an existing building and then um, say work in the spring. Okay. All right, so it's kind of on the commissioners. What would you like to do? Um, do you want to make a motion? Do you want to make a motion with some recommendations? Um, do you need more information? What would you guys like to do? Um, it's, it seems like I'm the only one who's uncomfortable with the aesthetic. I mean, it, part of the reason it, it, it concerns me is that this is an entrance way to Stoughton for people coming up in and for coming west on the highway. This is kind of where you're entering. But if I'm the only person who sees this as uh, unattractive, then I, I guess I'm not going to raise that issue as hard as I might. Um, but I do think that if we have any recommendation, we should recommend um, the addition of the sidewalk um, on along veterans, as well as the uh, making sure that we um, address the the view triangles at the driveways and at the corner, the main intersection. I'm I'm actually I'm in agreement with Todd about the aesthetic. Actually, I just didn't mention that, but I think it's. I mean, I know it's it's going to be a big change from what is currently there, um, but I think how the structure that is currently there is very unobtrusive, um, which is a nice thing with having the you know the horizontal wood and uh, the darker color. I think that actually works okay for that. I also agree with that. Um, you know, it definitely needs the the color is is going to be very stark, and it is the entrance into the community. And you know, we we have enough buildings in town that are um, not exactly attractive. Starting, you know, when, first thing you see when you come into town. This building, although it is, uh, let's just say the exterior is wood and it, it may it very well may be tired, but it, um, I'll take I'll take wooden stone over slabs of metal sheeting any day. So uh, we're we're not trying to make it look like a house, which is what it looks like now. So that's. Well, so we, I don't care. It doesn't look like a house. Professional services building. Not a fan of the all metal buildings. We have enough of those in town. So Rodney, help me out here. Is, is there a way we can keep things moving and maybe work on the aesthetics a little bit more? You know, generally aesthetics are um, discussed at this level. I, I don't know if there is ordinance language to uh, be strong enough to dictate a change. Um, there, there may be, uh, but it's certainly not something that's been done um, often in the recent past. So if, if that's the desire of the commission, we'd need to be able to explore that deeper to see if there's a way to um, control that. The only place I found, Rodney, because I, I was looking for any kind of justification for even bringing this up, and because it's it's hidden fasteners, all I could see is uh, under within our um, uh, within our guidelines under 34I, um, paragraph one, it says that the plan commission, in its consideration of the submitted complete application, shall take into account. Um, the basic intent of the zoning ordinance to ensure attractive, efficient, and appropriate development. And so it just kind of falls under, under attractive. 
And then you get into the issue of aesthetics is in the eye of the beholder. But um, I, I think there's certainly some some argument here that, that the the change in material, um, um, while it is not 50, over 50% 50 with exposed um, fasteners, it is still a significantly metal wrapped building now. Um, and it is, with it being painted white, I don't think it's gonna look like wood when it's painted white. Um, and, my, and again, switching it to vertical, I don't know if it necessarily improves the design of the building. Um, but again, it, it's, I would love to have the, the, the county work with us on, on massaging in the exterior, um, but I think it's probably gonna be challenging for the commission just based on the word attractive um, to disallow this. Um, but I think we can certainly stress the, uh, we do have grounds for the sidewalk, the view triangles and the, and again, I'm on the fence for the egress onto the, the state highway. Um, but I'd love to have the county come back with us and, and massage that aesthetic a little bit if they can. And we've made requests like that to other developers as well. So I, I guess do we need a, I need to put that in a motion form, Mayor? Yeah, I think we we do need something we can vote on. All right. So I will move to approve the site plan with the request that the county um, uh, rethink the the white the the uh, the, uh, the wrap aesthetic um, to make it not quite so stark and dramatic a change. Um, I would, um, but with the addition of sidewalks along, uh, a sidewalk along veterans and adjustment to vegetation to ensure um, view triangles are achieved at the driveway and, and onto veterans and the um, other uh, intersection corners. Um, and now I'm stuck on the egress on the, the state highway. Um, I guess I'll approve, I, I guess I'll motion to approve that as well for a, for a safety and service perspective. Um, but we should probably back it up with some documentation and prepared for businesses like Quick Trip saying, why not us? All right, were you able to capture that, Rodney or Michael? I believe so. Um, the three, the, the four points that um, the the motion intends to include is to have the county reconsider the wrap aesthetic um, without any particular uh, distinction of what needs to be done. But uh, that was one item. Require or confirming the requirement for the sidewalk along Veterans Road, um, confirming that the view triangles are rectified as part of the site plan and four, to have the Dane County provide the documentation on their appeal to the DOT related to the access point to 51. Okay, so but, that also- But to allow it. Gotcha. All right, and is there a second? I, I have, can I ask, ask just, I just wanna make sure that I'm clear that the intention of the um, driveway on 251 is simply that would only be used if there was a emergency response situation. That wouldn't be something that they would normally be using to exit the facility under non-emergency situation. Is that correct? Well, yes, we're only asking for it to be used for emergency, emergency egress only. All right, was there a second on the motion then? Sure. All right, second by Schumacher. Um, any discussion on any or all of that? So I had a, a clarification question on that. Um, does that mean that we would just meet with city staff to finalize? Um, elevations, or do we have to come back to the plan commission? What is the preference of the commission? 
well, we can do whatever you'd like. Um, on, on which, I, I guess with all the barking, I, I missed which part of they're asking us to come back or not come back. For, for the building um, uh, finishes, the, the exterior materials. Uh, um, part of it. Well, it's my understanding was just a recommendation. It wasn't like something you had to come back and prove all this design to specifically appease Todd Beckman. <laughs> I made a recommendation and that's all it was. Is that correct, Tom? That is correct. That if I, I'm not disallowing it to be built the way it's rendered for the exterior facade. I'm just asking them to maybe just take a little time to think about it. Because I, th I think it could be improved. But no, there's, I don't think there's any requirement that they come back to me. Um, certainly if Rodney or Mike wants to take a look at something, that would be great. Um, but otherwise, it's not a requirement based on my motion. One question. How how do we monitor if if the emergency use for 51 is going to happen? How do we monitor to make sure that it um, stays as for emergency only? And that it doesn't have uh, mission creep into just being used all the time. What does your appeal application look like? I don't think we've gotten a copy of that material that's been submitted to the DOT related to that application. So is there a question for me? Yeah, Mark, do, do you have a copy of the appeal materials that were submitted to the DOT that indicates its request is related to only emergency egress? Sure. And I would think that that, you know, appeal request would, would um, you know, be based, that approval would be based on that, assuming we get approval from DOT. Um, I don't have that. The county had submitted that themselves, but we could possibly try. We could try to get a copy to you of that. Sorry about that. I lost power there for a second. I don't know if my computer rebooted or what happened here. Did I miss anything? We, we were talking about how you ensure that the egress onto the state highway is only used for emergency purposes. I, I think part of it is is that the by design. Um, it's not that particular egress is not even connected to the rest of the parking lot except through the building. And so the, the um, sheriff's vehicles would have and deputies would have to be uh, pulling into the, the new, is it a four bay stall uh, or four bay addition? Um, so they'll be pulling into that space and they'll be the only vehicles that pull in. And my guess is when they pull out, I guess they could pull out that direction if they were only just doing their patrolling. Um, but I guess if there's ability from the interior to be able to turn around and go out veterans, um, if it's a non-emergency, they're just starting to do their patrolling. Um, I think that would be good to show um, that there's the ability for them to go um, to the south and out veterans if it's not a lights and siren kind of situation. Yeah, and just um, in conversation with uh, Lieutenant Baylor, who who supervises this precinct, you know, the question was, well, how many how many um, squad vehicles typically go out on a call? And you know, a lot of times it's it's just one, but at at most it's three or four, and so we have four, um, you know, room for four vehicles in that garage. So maybe all of them, depending on who's on on duty and whose vehicle is in the garage at that time. Um, you know, maybe it's only a couple going out and then a couple would go out the other way, but at least there's at least a couple getting to the, whatever the calls for, um, you know, very quickly. And that's the goal. That's the goal of going out and accessing Main Street. All right, did we get all the questions answered then? Are we comfortable with the language we have in the motion?
know, even with this the discussion we've had, I mean, I I, I wouldn't feel uh, my feelings wouldn't be hurt if we did were able to see what they come up with design wise for the face of the building. So Todd's okay with not seeing it again, and he's more. Well, I'd, um, I'd love to see it. Astute. Yeah, I'd, I'd certainly love to see it, but I just don't know if we, I don't know if we can require it without really kind of, um, I think, stretching the envelope a little bit. I think there's some wording there, but I, I think it's, um, in most cases, with, with other developers, we've, we've talked about potential modifications. I've mentioned to rethinking the wood around the, the um, entrances to the garage and maybe toning down the off whites um, in terms of color choice. I guess a third would be to consider vertical siding instead of, I mean, horizontal siding instead of vertical, because I think it works better with the architecture myself. Um, if they look at those three things, at least, I think that's um, about the way we typically approach it for other design proposals. But if someone, if someone else in the commission thinks that we can require that it come back before approval, I guess I'm open to that option. Okay, would you guys like to vote on this or would you like to bring it back? I'd like to vote on it. All right, so anybody else? Otherwise, there is a motion on the table. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed, that motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next item is a request by Ben Moniker of JP Cullen for site plan approval to install an external nitrogen tank system for Stoughton trailers at 1111 Veterans Road. Uh, what do we have here, Rodney? This is a site plan due to the exterior nature of the work that's proposed here. It's pretty minor in nature, but it is depicted on the plan shown on the screen um, and it is subject to the site plan review. All right, any initial questions or comments from commissioners? What production purpose does the nitrogen tank have? I'm assuming there isn't one there to begin with. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if it serves as part of their metal um, processing and welding uh, manufacturing aspect of it. I, I'm not sure of that particular use. Is there anybody on the call here from Stone Trailers? Okay, what is currently on this locate in this spot here? Anything? Oh, you're muted. I don't, I don't believe there's anything on this particular location currently. So it looks like it's kind of near their current building and not too far from the zinc building that's going up. So it's on the south side of their, their building. Um, there are some existing tanks already nearby or adjacent to it, as shown here. Um, All right, commissioners, is that enough information for you or do you want more or do you want to make a motion to approve it? I'll make a motion to approve it as it says. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right, any discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Um, item number 14, a request from Robert Lang for extraterritorial jurisdiction approval for a land division, CSM, County Highway N, Town of Dunkirk. We're looking for a recommendation to the council. Looks like the map is up here. How far down is it, Rodney? Yeah, it's just, just south of the railroad tracks, so just south of Stoughton Trailers. Um, County Trunk N. This is a large tract of land. You can see it's actually bisected by significant wetlands that are mapped on the, especially on lot one um, or the existing lot one. I'm sorry. That lot two creates the area that encompasses most of the wetland area. Lot one looks like it will ultimately be a building site. Okay. Any questions on this one? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion. I saw Alder Majewski light up, but nothing came out. Um, looking for a motion on this one. Uh I apologize because we had a lot of, of material in these in this tonight's packet. So if, if I'm looking at this correctly, then lot two is to the right of our the, what's on the screen now. So this was one larger um, parcel that goes all the way from County Highway and through that ingress, egress easement there, or the, the, the narrow portion of it, but then goes all the way um, over to the right. So lot two is what's being broken off from the larger lot. That's my understanding. Yes, this is the exterior of lot. Here's a here's another depiction of it. This gives you a little better viewpoint of it. Okay. So lot, lot two is a larger piece. Lot one is the one at front highway N. Ah, uh, okay. Now the purpose for this subdivision? I mean, is it to be able to develop differently than they would otherwise? I don't know the exact answer. I believe it's to create a buildable parcel lot one. I don't think lot two has a buildable area on it with all the wetlands that encumber the primary, the larger piece of this lot two. So this might actually provide more protection for lot two in some ways. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll make a motion to approve the subdivision. Uh, or no, was, CSL. Sorry. I'm sorry. So it's a motion to approve the CSL. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. That. Second by Robinson. Any more discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That motion carries. Number 15 is a request by Jason Chandler for extraterritorial jurisdiction approval for land division CSM at 1645 Lake Kiganza Road and 3610 Rutland Dunn Town Road, Town of Dunn. I see Jason's on the call if anybody has any questions. Uh, commissioners, do you have any initial questions or Rodney, you want to go through this? Uh, I'll allow Jason the opportunity to speak. He's here. Give him the opportunity. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, we were dividing, uh, purchasing part of the lot from the Moyes, the 3610. Uh, we're in the process of creating more hay field for us to use. Um, we're using a property to the north of there, and we're already going to start renting the lot two that's marked in there. Um, it's directly right behind our house. Um, they approached us instead of renting it to purchase it because they don't use it for any agricultural purposes currently. It is a current hay field and that's how it's gonna stay. All right, any questions or comments from commissioners? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion for approval. I'll make the motion to approve. 
Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Caravello. Any discussion? Hearing none. Oh, Ty, did you have something? You're muted. Uh, no, I had the one forgot to mute. Um, is there any, are there any buildings on lot two? I mean, lot two is where the hayfield is, correct? Correct. And, and any there's on lot two? Oh, go ahead. So I just want to know if there's any building. I'm trying, it says see detail. There, sheet. there is no, there is no existing and there's no, you cannot build a dwelling anymore. There's no more splits or divides. There's just uh, a building envelope right now on the original property town of Dunn just approved of 20 minutes ago um, that just stays, all the buildings stay next to each other if there ever could be. It's never in the hay field. It stays agricultural. Thanks. So what you're trying to say is their meetings go faster than ours. It was scary. You guys were almost in step with them. And I was like, oh no, two computers at once. <laughs> All right, any questions or comments on this one? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed, that carries. Thank you for being here. Thank you, have a good night. All right, next one, item 16, uh, discuss conceptual plans for Dvorak's 51 North subdivision. Uh, Rodney, you wanna kinda give us a review of this one? <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, Bob Dvorak is the landowner. You'll recall this property was annexed to the city um, about two years ago. The developer is looking at development concepts. He began introducing some concepts to us kind of at the outset of the pandemic. So a number of months ago, there's been some staff level iterations and discussions along with the mayor, mayor's input. And it, it's kind of morphed into this stage where um, it's being presented to the plan commission and the parks and rec committee to gain some feedback in the process before they'd actually proceed with a, an urban service area amendment and a planning process for it. Um, I would allow the developer, I think we should allow the development team to offer some comments and the background on how they got to this point and provide the insight as to the, how the design morphed into what we have before us tonight. Thanks, Rodney. Rodney this is Steve Tremlett with MSA. Uh, Bob is here as well. Um, Rodney, do you mind going, putting on the first concept? So we have, uh, thank you. There's two concepts here. Uh, they're basically the same except for some, how you work with trails and the park system a little bit. And that's kind of an iterations that we've been going through as mentioned. Um, as you can see here, this is by the comp plan it's supposed to be kind of a mixed use district. Um, and so we looked at areas between Oak opening and uh, 50, 51 as a commercial area and then kind of, Feather it out as you go west, uh, densities gets lower as you go west there, but with the park being the central component there, um, and then also looking at the edges uh, to look at where we can preserve some woodlands and open space, as you see on to the north on the, on the west side, 51. Um, and then if you look on the east side of 51, the idea of um, making Nygaard go further east away from the intersection that may happen down the road, with Town Line Road um, to the north. And that's kind of based on the comp plan and the neighborhood plan for that area as well. Uh, but again, using park space, all at six, uh, using park and, and the trail system to create that uh, green corridor through here, trail corridor um, between that and the rural sections. Um, as already noted, we're looking for some feedback here. Um, in general, um, if you go to the next concept, just for reference, you'll see the yellow dotted lines that are in these two maps show kind of the trail corridor. Um, on this one, it carries it all the way west on what is called the Vork Drive. If you go to the second concept, uh, it takes it um, not so far to the west, um, but brings it off of Town Line Road for portion that you could connect further to the west. Yeah, so it falls through the middle there, through the park space, and then comes back to Oak Opening through there. Um, we also looked at 
putting some single family lots, which is in yellow. Uh, the label is ABC on this on the north side to kind of complete that single family uh, street there and let the, the, the oranges, the duplexes to the north there. Um, and then if you follow it to the east, you have the multifamily buildings, but uh, closer to the single family comes down to four plexes showing there. Um, so kind of getting a mix of uses, the idea of balanced neighborhood um, to get the different densities and different types of buildings. On the east side, again, those are duplex lots uh, there. And then there's a larger multifamily complex that's in that triangle piece there. And again, the park is kind of central over there as well. Um, so we're really looking for some feedback. Again, the stormwater is being managed in all areas here. We're even taking some additional lands on the Northeast coming from the, the subdivision to the South there. Uh, so that's being managed as it flows through. Um, again, we're dealing with where the train is. We are dealing with all the stormwater, such as Outlot 2, which is way on the West end. Uh, there's a, a, a drop off to the West. So that was an addition that instead of regrading everything, we're gonna manage it as it goes by elevation. Um, Bob, do you want to add a little comments at all? Do you have any opinions? Yeah. Well, what I'd like to add, guys, is everybody involved here, and thank you for um, taking a look at this early on. Um, with the experience that we've had at Nordic Ridge and a little feedback of, of why we'd like to propose this uh, concept plan as is, is because of the diversification that I think we need and the type of buyers that we cannot sell product to now because we don't have that available in Nordic Ridge. And with uh, existing absorption rate in Nordic Ridge, we're selling approximately 10 to 12 lots a year. We've only closed on six lots this year in Nordic Ridge, um, which means we have approximately eight to 10 years of inventory left at the exist existing absorption rate in Nordic Ridge. So we've had a lot of interest in duplex lots, multifamily lots, more of the um, type of uh, product that you see on the corner of Hole and, and A that Spanos did. So that's why uh, we came up with this concept plan, knowing, knowing the need for this type of product in our community. I guess one thing I'll add also just on the transportation network, um, through our process, we had some private drives through some of the condo buildings and, and through this, we actually ended with some public streets in all sections with two streets to the west. Uh, we're thinking what is labeled Dvorak Drive, uh, connecting all the way to 51. And that's uh, one of the items that we're hoping to get support from the city is the idea that their development as you go west here, this would be a good location to provide that access to relieve some of the pressure down the road that would be on Town Line Road. Because um, if you go south, uh, Roby Lane uh, ends into what is a tree farm, I believe. So just thinking that this would be a good collector street um, and connect either a limited or a full access on 51. Um, in discussions with staff, Valcom Way, which is on the east side of 51, uh, would remain with the intent down the road uh, when you connect to the north that that section could be closed off um, and so that it kind of helps with the functionality and, and flow and safety because there's a hill there to allow for Roby and for Townline Road to service this area. I would just add, add from a staff perspective, uh, we spent a fair amount of time developer and engineers have been pretty flexible trying to help us understand what they're trying to do and what is workable and what's not um, a lot of these multi-families would be a workforce type developments uh, i know that's what spanos would would like to talk about um, to try to you know bring people that are looking for you know for jobs in stoughton an affordable place to live right now quite frankly the market anything that's 350 and above they're just not moving as quick as as the places that are you know 300 ish or or even you know multifamily and and i think that's one of the needs for the duplexes is is to make it more affordable for people 
And I think that's what the developer is trying to do on this. Uh, we spent a lot of time with um, Dan and Park and Rex trying to put together some trail systems that connect. I can tell you that Bob physically walked through Virgin Lake Trail to see where it would connect on the east side um, so he could understand where we were coming from as far as wanting to have the connectability there. And I think they've done a really nice job of, of running that trail through the parkland and then extending it to the north for future development um, someday toward the Linderoo property. And kind of the same thing on the west side, they proposed a couple different options. And I think that's why they're here tonight is to try to understand um, what your initial thoughts are. We'll do the same tomorrow night at Park and Rec and try to make any potential improvements based on feedback from the plan commission and the park and rec before they get too deep into this. Um, they've already, you know, invested, um, you know, some funds to get to this point. And as you can see in the packet, all the steps that they have to go through is a fairly costly and, and you know, take some time to go through that process. And they just want to make sure we're all on the same page before we take the next steps. Oh, other than that, I guess I would open it up from any initial thoughts or suggestions or um, anything from the commissioners. I have uh, two things. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Didn't hear you there, Brent. Um, um, one thing, and I know this would be a major revision, but I'm just curious about the addressing the transportation and the, thinking about the alignment of Dvorak Drive with Belkman Way. Was there any consideration to actually making those align and, and have Highway 51 be a roundabout potentially at Belkman Way and Dvorak Drive and 51? I guess so, I would let Steve think, answer that or Bob. Um, I can tell you we did have some initial discussions with the DOT when they were here last to talk about the roundabouts and, and go ahead, Bob, if you want to answer the question. Yeah, to follow up with your comment, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, the conversations we had with the DOT, we, we checked with them over the last 18 months, two years, with a, a discussion on this and they feel long-term plan would be Rutland Dunn Town Line Road for for that type of inter intersection fill and um, basically eliminate Belcom and Way. And uh, in, in discussions with city staff is have to work drive as that uh, main corridor to the west to alleviate some of the pressure off some of the other intersections. Yeah, and I think the other reason that Steve mentioned was the hill that's there by Valcom Way, kind of, and then also the spacing between Rutland Don, Valcom Way, Dvorak Drive, you know, where it would connect, you know, wouldn't be much spacing there. Um, and you'd have two fairly major intersections there within a, probably a quarter mile of each other, if that. Yeah, yeah I, I can see where there, I appreciate where there'd be a lot going on in a short, relatively short distance on a busy road. Yeah, the other thing I failed to mention is one of the things we tried to do in our discussions was to be sensitive to the people that live in, in Dunkirk area there um, in Eggleston's Woods. And so we, we didn't want to put any, you know, additional traffic on Malcolm Way if we could help it. And then also to create kind of a buffer area using the trails and the parks and the ponds to at least offer some, you know, some, you know, the buffer area there and, and to keep traffic away from that area. And, you know, because, you know, we want to be good neighbors and sensitive to, to their needs. They've, you know, they've had a pretty peaceful neighborhood there for years and we don't want to be disruptive. So that was the other reasoning as well as, is, is eventually vacating Belkinum Way and using um, Rutland Dunn to the north and, and Nygaard all the way through to Roby to the south. 
my my other comment is and I don't know if this would be potential or if this was something considered or the lots that are marked 21 or 20, 21, 22, and 23 at the lower edge of outlot six, any possibility that those lots could go away and that park could just be one big, lovely, beautiful park? Well, honestly, we played with the numbers quite a bit, and to get this thing to cash flow without a, a, a TIF request is, is pretty slim the way it is now, Paul, Phil. And um, we played around with this a lot of different concepts and, and, and angles to try to not only appease city staff and where we got to to this point, but yet still make the numbers work. I think appease is a, police, a pretty polite way of saying it. We were pretty persistent about having as much road frontage as we could and trying to make up the difference with the trail. So that's what we tried to do is kind of that compromise. But if you take them four units away, like Bob said, the cash flow is, is an issue and it really doesn't leave much of a development. You, you would end up with more you know, storm water than you would with actual development. And, you know, that's a challenge right now. And, you know, certainly Steve could touch on that more than I can about the, you know, the requirements for the storm land is, you know, the ever uh, increasing uh, uh, requirements for that is you can see it takes up a good chunk of land, especially on the east side. Yeah, I understand. I, I made note of this is that uh, part of this would be treatment for for lands to the south on that side. So that's partly why you also see significant amount of pond area facilities. Um, and so, yeah, you would be left with five duplexes and the one multifamily development. <clears throat> so it does make it a little tougher because we are treating water coming from other lands. And so this is kind of the balance where we landed. So if I can ask a couple of questions related to the, the coding on the, or the, the color coding, I assume that the dark blue is actual, um, it'll be retained water that most be uh, 12 months out of the year. And what is the, the light blue, just kind of an overflow or what is, how does the, the light blue versus the dark blue? Well, so this is conceptual. Again, uh, these are very basic rectangles. Um, but the the intent is to show you the difference between the dry ponds and the wet ponds. So okay. dry ponds are infiltration primarily. Okay. And and so the, the main difference between the two options that we have in front of us are the trail systems, because the development looks pretty much the same between the placement of the um, single family lots, the, the small multifamily, the large multifamily. It looks pretty much the same from my eye between the two options, it's largely where the trail system goes. Is that what we're, um, in terms of the, the difference between these two options? That is the primary difference. Uh, I mean, there's a slight part of it being on Dvorak Drive where you have the single family on the Western edge, but in general, yes, it's about, do you carry the trail over to the West edge um, and then bring it all the way back and then run it along the wooded section along Thailand Road, um, which is, it is quite a diversion. Um, or if you're looking at the second version, it, it doesn't pull it back as far and it runs it more into the park space. Um, and then also the other section that would run west uh, would be considered a green quarter. Even though it's between those lots, it would be an easement through there and no development on that western section west of, uh, I forget the name, Prentice Lane. Um, so the idea is that you're creating a new trail corridor going west off of that major road. So. I want to give you the proper feedback. So I guess it, it probably there's there's a lot of conversations here with the parks and trails folks that I'm probably not as in tune with. Um, but like all the green space at, at the top of the first option along Rutland there, I mean, is that just as a buffer to Rutland? Um, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out why it is that how that green space would really be all that useful. It doesn't look wide enough to really be much of a park space. Um, I don't see the advantage of running all the way to the western edge of your development unless um, I'm not privy to the, the way the trail system would interact to other 
development proposals that are further to the west. Um, it would seem to me that your second option, where it cuts down closer to um, the multifamily um, and, and expands out lot three to some extent, um, that one seems just uh, at face first blush makes more sense to me, but I, maybe I'm missing something. Yeah, the first version was kind of what we put forward in our recent conversation with staff and the mayor, and this was an iteration at the end before submitting that came about from that conversation. I would agree the the swath that is all at one on that first concept was there is some steeper slopes on the west northwestern edge, and there is some uh, existing woodlands there. Uh, I can't say to what quality that is, um, and the intent would think that you would continue that westward into new development but your your statement is correct i i think you have some merit to suggest too is uh works with the trail better than what you see in all in the <clears throat> alternative one and we, and we are to bring, meeting, bring it tonight because you know obviously phil is on plan commission but he also is the chairperson for the park and rock and they meet tomorrow night and the second one came based on feedback that I had with Dan and, and with Bob, really. Um, at one point, we thought we could maybe run the trails, uh, the Western Trail kind of between the duplexes through the pond, but that one really didn't shake out. So we decided that it would be uh, advantageous to kind of run it north of the pond there on, on the Western edge. Um, and, and that would actually serve more residents that way as well. And it serves as an easement too to manage uh, all lot too. And then one comment I'd like to make along Rutland downtown line road is we were asked to give a 50 foot easement. So we gave some of that up for future right away. So you got a hundred foot wide width for Rutland Dunn heading west and all the way to the intersection of 51. So that's why that trail changed also. Okay. Yeah, one of the things we're doing Todd is the park and rec are in the process of doing park design guidelines. And what we're seeing on the trails is, it's kind of all over the board. And I think, you know, we're suggesting a, at least a 50 foot wide trail is appropriate. So you're not just seeing, you know, six foot wide of pavement, and then you're looking through somebody's side window that there's some space between the trails and the development. And then the other thing, which was mentioned by Phil, is is to, to pro try to provide, you know, as close to 50% or more street frontage around the park, which we've been able to do easily on the west side. On the east side, it's not as much, but it's it's pretty close. And with that combined with the trail, I think that that helps offset that. So those are kind of the one of the two main points that you know Dan and I have been talking about as he puts together these design guidelines. And I think that's something else that might be on their agenda for tomorrow night. And that's a huge undertaking for him to do. But we felt that you know we'd like to try to incorporate some of that into this plan if we could. So that's that's why those are there. Currently we don't have anything that requires it, but it just seems to make sense to do that plus we think it'll be more attractive for you know for people that you know want to purchase these properties mayor yes also sir be aware that uh public works will be starting at this next meeting uh public works we will start looking at changing the ordinance on retention detention ponds and their shapes so that they have a much more natural uh configuration and that may change what you need for your area and how that is laid out okay and public works meets uh was it this thursday yes all right and you're chairing public works right i am all right so be there i will be there Any other thoughts or feedback or hopefully everybody at least understands the rationale, maybe not agree with 
a hundred percent, but we're we're open to some constructive feedback. One more question, Mayor. Sure. Um, you're talking about the 50 foot width for uh, for trails. Yes. I think is great, and it should be a minimum of that. Um, so along Devore Drive and Oak Opening Drive, are we having 50 foot uh, 50 foot wide path on both sides? On, on where those are at? Not along the right of way, no. I find that to be a problem. Because it's basically it's a not right that at those two points it's no longer a trail it is a glorified uh, sidewalk. You're talking about the stretch south the stretch of the four plexus, where the where the four plexes are to the outlet. Yep. And then also, yeah, that's that's from talking. Okay, just that one spot, or was there another one? Just well, that's that's the only spot where I'm where I'm seeing that at this moment. Okay. Uh, we, we have those pinch points, and like I said, that's no longer a trail. That's a that's that's a sidewalk. Yeah, with I guess only I can speak to that is I understand your your point. Um, I think in any bikeway system, um, there are always going to be some gaps that need to be an alternative version to make the linkages and and well, and you could talk about a mid-block crossing in Dvorak and run it between the single family and the fourplex. Um, it just, it's about spacing and then, you know, some, and that's the only way I can see that working, but there's always, we're making sure that there is all off street paths through the section. There is a segment there that would not be a trail between buildings and that's where we are looking in that 50 foot yeah i mean you will have trees along the terrace and buildings are set back based on building setback minimums um so it's not exactly 50 it depends on how you look at it if you look include the street you know if you put enough trees it's wider than that then if, if you're stretching it a little bit well as long as your terraces are over 12 to 15 feet wide and they're not like the, the six footers that we see on a lot of these commercial areas, you're starting to you're starting to get a little bit of uh, separation. Um, but then again, you know this is not built yet, so you're asking for input and we're giving it. Sure. Yeah, that's what we need. Any other thoughts or anything? The only thing I would look at would be to uh, to change one one of your names of of a street name in there. I think uh, Master Lane. I see you've got Apprentice and Master Lane, but I think that that might be kind of a might be a hot button word that you might want to avoid. Okay, so we heard from Tom and Phil and Todd and Brett. Anything from you, Tom uh, Robinson? Or, no. Okay, and is uh, is Seltzer still on here? He must have dropped off. Okay, so we'll we'll take the feedback, and I think we'll be gathering more tomorrow night from Park and Rack. So we'll see if. Uh, if they have the same thoughts. If you think of anything else, you know, just let us know. I mean, I, I don't know what, you know, the timetable, there's a lot to do here before we actually get to this point. And, you know, what's kind of the next step, Rodney? I mean, obviously we need to come up with, you know, a, a little more feedback, but what happens after that? Well, we're having our initial discussion with uh, Kepler Regional Planning Commission to just talk about the process for an urban service area amendment and what level of detail plans they need to have in order for the city to make an application related to that. 
Um, but ultimately there will be a need for a preliminary plat process to be submitted, an urban service area amendment. You've got development agreements. So there's a number of steps that we'll have to go through, um, but understanding the basic framework of a conceptual layout is kind of imperative to help them and the city understand how to move forward with a development in this area. All right, any last minute thoughts? Well, just, just one thing quick is that since you'd mentioned the word timeline, um, the eastern the piece to the east of 51, I'm guessing would be, I, I'm just kind of curious about potential timelines for that piece and then compared to the piece west of 51. Any ideas? Well, the east side, the, the east side would have to go first because that's where we tie into uh, sanitary and water mains. And um, the intent, or the intent would be if we possibly could is to break ground next spring if uh, if all the stars line up, I guess. And, and then we'd sub sewer and water across 51 at that time. And when the, when the west side would go, I have no idea at this time. Um, we have no interest in product on the west side. We want to get through the first steps first before we uh, present it to other investors and that type of thing. Thanks, Bob. You bet. All right, anybody else? All right, well, we appreciate your feedback tonight. I'm sure we'll be talking about this one quite a bit between now and in the spring. So thanks for being here, uh, Bob and Steve. Yep, thanks thank you, everybody. Us. All right, we're almost there, guys. Uh, item 17 is a proposed zoning ordinance amendment to section 78-707 and 78-704, which is commercial exterior lighting standards. Um, we do have a need for a public hearing on this one as well. Anything you want to cover quick, Rodney? As we've been discussing, we're, we're making incremental changes or finding things in our zoning code that need attention. This is one of them that staff has been um, dealing with on a number of submittals from development proposals. And we bumped up against it a number of times. We've then started to compare to the other communities trying to really focus in on the fact that we have a standard that we feel is still important half a foot candle of light at, at the property line and for the actual light fixtures to not be seen or the light from the fixtures to not be seen from adjacent residential properties. Those two standards are core to most area um, requirements. You'll note in our current code, we have a number of minimum and maximums that um, prevail throughout the site that make it very challenging to really balance the entire lighting package. Uh, but ultimately, the the focus of what we found on other communities is maintaining a half a foot candle max at the property line, not to exceed that, and then really focusing on the fact that you don't want to have those light fixtures be visible from adjacent residential properties. So that's the draft as as written, trying to capture that that focus change. Um, there's a public hearing tonight to consider that. I'm certainly open for discussion and consideration beyond the public hearing as well. All right, anything from commissioners before we go into the public hearing? Hearing none, we'll close the regular meeting and open it up for the public hearing. Uh, nobody was signed up. Doesn't look like anybody's left that could speak. Um, we'll close the public hearing and reopen. Um, for consideration. Um, so we just have basically the lines that are struck. Is that what I'm gathering from your description? Yeah, there's a slight uh, additions are underlined. Um, cross stricken areas are to be removed from the proposed language. All right. Anybody have any thoughts or concerns about what's proposed here? Uh, Rodney? Yes. 
um, the way I'm reading this is basically is that you're actually squeezing down a little bit, a little more on the amount of light uh, light pollution. I certainly think we're keeping in spirit of the dark sky, but really focusing on the perimeter of the site as we, as opposed to um, internal lighting components. Did that answer your question? I, I guess it does. Um, I'm just thinking of car lots and yeah, they're rather large. And so you could have something pretty bright on the inside, and how, I guess how do you achieve how do you achieve that half foot then? That half half foot power. Yeah, I'm not going to say that they won't still have some challenges, but this looks at variations throughout the entire site, whereas we focus with what's proposed to really be the perimeter is the area that we focus on of most concern. Um, those those sites oftentimes would have challenges, both with the type of lighting fixtures that they'd have to use, as well as the position of their lighting fixtures so that they don't have fugitive light leaving the site. I very much like the term fugitive light. I think the language that you have in the ordinance, though, or that you're proposing is cleans it up a bit. I mean, it it makes it so that it's it's ultimately what happens at the perimeter and what happens in between is as long as it meets the guideline of the perimeter. All right. Any other questions or comments? Otherwise, we're looking for a recommendation on this resolution for the council. I just have one question on enforcement, because um, I've always been curious about this in the sense that, you know, the proposals often include the um, the light plan um, with the lumens identified. Um, <clears throat> do we ever go back and just verify that the, what's actually installed actually meets the lumens at the edge of the property? That, and whether that, because I know there's some properties that seem a lot brighter along the outer boundary than what you'd expect would be 0.5 lumens or 0.5 foot candles. So I, I, does, yes, does, yes, Mike run, does, does Mike run around with a a a, 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 bolt, I mean, a, a luminosity meter and? <laughs> he does. Does he? He does. He does. Oh, yeah. and, and we do get out there and we do end up working with a number of them post installation where they have to modify the lighting configuration or the light fixtures that they used or put different house shrouds on them. So okay. it's, it's very common that there's alterations that are occurring post installation, even though their, their plan shows it would be compliant. We're out there trying to um, reconcile that and oftentimes are making changes to it out in the field. So my guess is that this proposed these proposed edits are going to be a lot easier for you guys to monitor and test then too, because it's probably a lot harder to do minimum average kinds of calculations versus just doing the the, the uh, foot candles at the property boundary and looking to make sure that fixtures aren't <clears throat> visible. Very true. Very true. Yes. Good. I'm all for it. All right. Are you willing to make a, a, a motion to back that up? I sure will. I'll move that uh, the, we recommend approval of the amended zoning code, section 78-707 and 78-704. Is there a second? Second. Second by Caravello. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed, that carries. Any future agenda items? Well, I certainly will have some more information uh, to share back related to additional zoning code amendments that'll come forward. Um, we think that the concepts related to the Dvorak um, layout or 51 North or West will, will come back to, to you before getting additional approvals, but those are the, the two that really rise to the top right now. Additional zoning code, 
and Dvorak concepts. Then any other information we hear about the uh, the sheriff's office proposal as that comes along? Yeah, definitely. It sounds like you know, that will more in the form of a report, but certainly we'll 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 share information back with you. Sure. sure. I I had a, a thought. You know, I when you go to rental car um, uh, businesses and you get rent, they have those those spikes that are pointed so you can only drive in one direction. Maybe we need to install those spikes across their egress only driveway so that they try to come in from the highway, they pop their tires. <laughs> That's only tongue in cheek because we're getting so late tonight. That's <laughs> activated by emergency lighting, right? Emergency lighting. There you go. There's got to be some way. All right. If you guys think of anything else you want to add on as a future agenda item, let us know. Um, we haven't heard much from Quick Trip. I know they're still talking. They don't have an agreement yet with Fast and All. We received an email earlier today on that. Um, you know, we think they're still trying to work something out, but we're not really sure what. So um, we can maybe anticipate having a future discussion on that. And I think that's all that I'm aware of at this point. It's been busy, so thanks for hanging in there tonight. That was a large agenda yeah got to entertain a motion to adjourn you got it in a second thank you uh, all in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 any opposed not opposed all right have a good night good night good night, good night.